I found the blowtorch and some loot, and uh, all I have to say about this thing is we need to get the blueprint for this as soon as possible because this thing rocks. Here we're learning the blueprint for the steel bumper. And the limb pulse emitter. Love this thing. This is what keeps abductors from pulling you off the road. Also the detailing station. I haven't done anything with this yet, um, but we will on camera. I just wanted to set it up so I could store all the detailing items inside of it. Also the side floodlights. Here I discover for the first time a charging station. So you just pull up underneath this thing and it recharges the battery. Uh, I found a couple of different ones of these and some of them had like a fuel tank too. Very useful. For some reason it teleport, teleported me um, onto the roof of the place. I guess it thought there was some obstruction or something, which is really odd. Here I'm scanning the uh, shocked tourists. One of you guys told me in the comments that these were actually different than the normal tourists, and they are. Uh, and this shows my lightning rod in action. Uh, pretty much, you know, shock tourists or anything else that arcs um, will use that to recharge the battery, which is awesome. And this is a repair station or a repair stop. So you pull up underneath this thing and it repairs your car. Very, very useful. Welcome back, everybody, to Pacific Drive. I am the Bearded OG, and uh, in this episode, we are going to potentially get to the mid zone. Um, we'll just kind of see how things go. Uh, so I have spent a lot of time off camera, many hours, in fact, um, just going out here in the outer zone and gathering um, resources, and specifically, or primarily, I should say, uh, gathering um, energy, uh, stable energy from the anchors. Um, so I've been, I haven't been to the to the extreme ends yet of the outer zone, but I've been, you know, pretty much all around in here uh, doing that. And I, I had already um, thought to myself that I really need to build some of that up and and get some, you know, some more things going here with the blueprints before we go into the mid zone because I've been told by more than one of you that the mid zone is no joke and it's gonna it's gonna be a lot tougher. Um, so as you can see I have accumulated 28.6 uh, stable units of power and uh, in the opening sequence there uh, where I recorded you know some of the the more key moments of, of, of some of that time off camera um, I already uh, did some more upgrades uh, to the car. So let's see, I think we got the detail station, we got the uh, side floodlight, the steel bumper, the the limb, limb pulse emitter. I love this thing, man. It's absolutely amazing uh, because it'll, you know, when it, it'll basically push away the uh, abductors. Yeah, couldn't think of what they were called for a second uh, when they try and drag you off the road. Uh, but you do have to be careful with it because it uses a lot of power. Um, I also discovered that when your battery completely runs out of power, it it doesn't actually prevent your car from um, are those alien gobbledygook tentacle things? Have they been there all the time? I don't know. Um, anyway, what <laughs> what I was saying was the uh, even if this battery runs completely out you still, um, the car still runs. What it means is that you can't, 
uh, you can't use any of your special attachments, like, for example, the limb pulse emitter. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I also have several uh, quirks now on the vehicle, and I've only been able to identify two of them. Uh, so if we go here, you can see we have a total of six quirks here. Um, quirk number four is the same one we had before where when I reverse, the hood opens. And I believe quirk number, it's either five or six, which I haven't diagnosed yet, <coughs> excuse me, happens where it'll turn the dome light on, and the cabin light on, when the hood closes. Um, but I don't know what the other quirks are. So if we start the car and back up, see the hood pops open, and when it closes, it turns the, the dome light on. So those are the two quirks that I do know about. So back up, that opens, pull forward, and the dome light comes on when the hood closes. Um, and I haven't fixed the, the, the hood issue because it now requires both an electrician's kit and a mechanic's kit, whereas before it was just a mechanic's kit. Uh, and I haven't learned that yet. And so I wanted to, you know, I wanted to wait for the next episode, you know, that uh, that we're doing right now, of course, before we do any more of this stuff, because I wanted to do that on camera with you guys. A couple other things. Um, when I logged into the game uh, a little bit ago, I couldn't find my transfer trunk. It was complete. I don't know where the hell it went, but I couldn't find it at all. So what I did was I turned on the vacuum cleaner and then it sucked it out of wherever the hell it was <laughs> so I could find it again. So so that's good. If you ever run into that situation, then, um, yeah, that's how you, how you can get it back. <clears throat> I am completely jammed full with storage. Um, so one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make another locker. Uh, but everything is just stuffed to the hilt, including this extra, you know, side storage and this and the transfer trunk itself. So, yeah, we definitely have to do something about the storage. Um, all right. So before we before we continue on in this episode with all the things I have planned, um, we're going to take a moment to uh, get updated on our logs. And I also have some uh, video sequences, uh, some audio logs that I ran into out in the field that I'm going to play for you as well. Um, if you already know all of this stuff or you don't want to you know go through all of the the lore and story stuff then as usual i will place a, a timestamp in the video um for you to to move forward to where the action begins all right so let's get started here uh, so right now we have arc warp um this is basically just the thing where if you if you get stuck or the car gets tipped upside down which has happened to me a couple of times you can step away a little ways away from it, press the T key and basically warp it to a new upright position. So that's what that's all about. Pockets of stability. Um, let's actually read this. The roads and junctions of the zone wind through pockets of stability. You'll be reasonably safe on your drive as long as you keep away from the edges. Should you wander too far out of a stable pocket, you'll find that the weather gets very bad very quickly and you won't get far. Okay, so that's basically the borders of the, the zones. I think everything else we're caught up on there. Um, we found, and, and I, I showed this to you in, in the opening sequence there, but we found the charge stop and the repair stop. Love these things, man. They're both super useful. So let's just read this. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, how do I even begin to sum up my first few days on the job? My first experience is working for this organization. I have no idea where to start. Arda is doing some remarkable things and has plans for so much more, and the organization is growing at such a rate it really feels like we're recru re recruiting the best of the best here, both at home and from overseas. We've been flying in new hires from halfway around the world, and admin can't process the security clearances fast enough. It looks like I've been assigned to the outfit research inductive charging and resonant coupling. The team is small, but we'll be working with the very latest limb technology, <clears throat> and there's already talk of how we might have a functional prototype by the end of next year. This means a working charging station, one deployed in the field. Able to power devices from as small as a radio to as large as a small train. It's truly astonishing, and every morning I have to pinch myself. Okay, and then the repair stop. This is the one that heals the, or, or repairs the car, I should say. Um, this spring has been an absolute whirlwind of work, and I don't think we've ever been more in sync with the engineering teams. Our progress has been terrific, 
And this week we had our first visit from Dr. Ophelia Turner, who wanted to see some of our new designs for herself. And it was just as we'd perfected waveform stability for the projected regenerative electromagnetic fields. My God, that's a tongue twister. Uh, the result was a lot of hairs raising on the back of necks, along with more than a few strengthened steel panels. We partially reconstituted several alloys at distances of up to six feet, which was even more than we had projected. The timing couldn't have been better. Dr. Turner is without a doubt a brilliant scientist, and it felt so satisfying to be able to impress her in person with our applications of her own technology. I really hope our teams can work together on this more because her insights into how we can achieve better projection and more stable waveforms already have me working on a redesign. Okay, so that's the repair stops. And the other thing about both of these is sometimes they'll have, you know, uh, containers that you can loot. And in one case, when I stopped at a charge station, it had... Um, it had a fuel pump, too, so I was able to actually refuel the car. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of random. Uh, okay, let's see. Shocked tourist. Um, you know what? Or, yeah, you know what? It's an increasingly bad time of the zone these days. Every day when I step out my door, I should get a different job. I should do something else. It's getting worse. I swear these things are all but springing up out of thin air, and now we have this chain reaction thing, this brutal deadly trap that just outright slaughters people. Whole lines of those dummies... Any one of them capable of setting off all the rest. Seven people have died in three days. You know what it feels like to me? Like the zone is murdering us. Even like it enjoys doing so. It's as if something really, really doesn't want us here. And you know what? That's fine by me. Tomorrow morning, I'm out. Okay. <clears throat> On the plus side, though, the shocked tourists and other things, you know, like spark towers and stuff, um, will also recharge your battery if you have the lightning rod. So, but they can also do damage, too. So, Broken Bunny... Um, I thought we already did this, but okay. I don't know. I don't like this. I feel like an experiment. That's what I feel like. Like someone is playing with me, maybe to learn about me, maybe just in the way you see a raccoon try everything it can to get into a trash can. Why would that be? Is this response to, is this a response to the experiments I'm performing? Am I interesting? Am I a snack? These damn things chase me and they leap on cars or the field equipment we've set up and it's like they're playing. It's like they're playing. Please, Anna, tell me you're feeling the same way. Tell me you're seeing this. Nothing in nature is random. Evolution means that things in our world have function. They have purpose. What is the purpose of these things? What are they trying to do? And are things in the zone evolving? Okay. Glittering boulder. This is the the little golden ball thing that we drove through to, um, uh, you know, when we jumped the ramp into that cappy whatever you know in the second episode the, the big anomaly thing um okay hey this is anna i'm totally going so fast right now oh no oh no it's happened again just out collecting some data from the weather stations and oh no there are these things out there that oh help if you touch them you ah no hold on charlie <laughs> look i'm not an engineer or a physicist i'm a meteorologist but my guess is these things are just charging huge amounts of energy into whatever they touch. And when they hit a car, you totally go so fast. Hold on, Charlie. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, Spark Tower. Uh, obviously, we have encountered these. I don't, maybe I just for, forgot to scan it early on or something. That could be. Um, Plasma-powered spark transmitters combining previously obsolete coils with limb-enhanced repeaters have proven to be the best way to boost signals throughout the zone. The constant increase in radiation and electromagnetic interference has made radio communication extremely difficult and often subject to bizarre distortions. These new modified coils appear to have solved that. The addition of local plasma power sources is a reliable way to keep each node within its vital infrastructure both operational and independent. However, the price we have to pay is constant maintenance and repair. They're demanding beasts and burn through components rapidly. If key resistors and capacitors are not regularly replaced, they quickly develop a habit of either shorting or even releasing constant high-voltage, low-current discharges into the immediate vicinity. Um, okay, so I guess they're saying that they help reduce the distortions for radio communication. I think that's what that means. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, guess I, I, I guess I didn't... You know, the one thing to keep in mind, too, is the first several episodes of this series i recorded almost virtually back to back so i hadn't seen people's comments and you know it didn't really occur to me um until we got into about episode four or five that i really need to like be scanning everything all of the time and some of you guys have indicated that in the comments too so that's just uh you know just why some of this stuff like you know we've known about a spark tower since episode one but 
I hadn't scanned it up until more recently. Okay, uh, here we've got uh, angry abductors. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So these these are just conditions in some of the zones we've gone into. Uh, the abductors in this part of the zone are particularly aggressive. Okay. Uh, we've also been into a heavy fog, which is pretty self-explanatory. Battery sapping. Um, environmental distortions in this part of the zone mean that all car battery uses will be much higher. Uh, something's moving. Um, I think this was just one where the tourists were more active. Violent voltage. Electrical discharges detected in this part of the zone are at a much higher voltage, which means they will arc past car defenses with ease. Dangerous. Underground mischief. Certain burrowing anomalies are more aggressive in this zone. Um, spark surge. Spark towers in this part of the zone are overcharged, making them even more dangerous. Curious fragility. The remnant seems to become more brittle in this part of the zone, meaning that collisions suffered will cause more damage. And I think we've already read about the rest of these. Well, you know what? Let's just do it. Anchor obs uh, obfuscation. Obs obfuscation. Obfuscation. There you go. That's one of those words that's just hard for my mouth to say. Increased magnetic interference means that anchor signatures in this part of the zone are indistinct. It will be harder to precisely locate them. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so we need to keep that one in mind if we're, if we're you know, hunting for limb power. Uh, disruptive discharge, electrical discharge detected in this part of the zone can damage and disrupt batteries. The Warrens, bunny anomalies run rampant in this part of the zone, so lots of bunnies. And perpetual stability, well, we already know what that means. Okay, let's see. We got some new car part thingies. Um, a, f a flare gun? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know why that's popping up now. We've had a flare gun for a long time. Car maintenance? Blowtorch. Oh, the blowtorch, you guys. <laughs> This thing is awesome. We gotta we gotta get this as soon as possible, but we have to get into um, uh, unstable power uh, to do that, which I don't think we can get to until we get to the mid zone anyway. Uh, but this thing is just a hundred times better than you know than using putty. Uh, so definitely want to get that as soon as possible. Okay, so we have uh, the detailing station, which we're gonna mess with here in this episode. But basically, you can put decals and stuff and other um, you know like uh, dingle balls and hood ornaments and that kind of thing on your car. This is antennas, the surfboard. Oh, yeah, that's just an attachment for the antenna. The smell of the waves, the surge of the foam, the smell of the salt. If you can't be out there right now, this is certainly a fine reminder of some very good life choices. <laughs> okay. Um, bobbleheads, we found a brick wall. Bobblehead, okay. Uh, what's it say? Don't bang your head against it. Break on through. Gotcha. Wood ornaments, we found the logo. Standard issue art equipment, reappropriated. The future stylings in this in these uncertain times, we must look to the future. Okay. Uh, well, it kind of looks like a 1950s fan, but uh, or a spaceship. I don't know. Kind of weird. A stock hood ornament. That's just the normal ornament. It came with the car just like the rest of the car did. <laughs> Funny. Uh, shifters. Let's see. We have found the shock absorber shifter. Okay, cool. So we'll put all this stuff on or, or try it out anyway. A junker steering wheel. Oh my God. Look at that. It's a steering wheel with vice grips. That's hilarious. And then, you know, then of course, just the stock steering wheel. Stickers. Can I pet your dog sticker? What a fine looking pupper. Okay. Uh, Black Lives Matter sticker. Black Lives Matter. Yes, they do. Um, and then there's several other stickers for LGBTQ stuff. Um, that, and this stuff just came with the the system when it was... Uh, or not the system, I'm sorry, with the detailing station. It was just kind of built into the station there. Okay. So I'm just going to click on all these so it shows that we've read them all. Okay, decals. Um, decal stamp, not today. Say no to the big stink from those big feet. Okay. Uh, black stripe decal stickers. Want to look cooler and meaner, but not so mean that you'll need that you'll get in trouble. These decals are the middle ground that you need. White stripes. How is it the stripes make your car go faster? Scientists just don't know. <laughs> okay. And then um, we have blue paint. 
gentle yet strong, humble yet beautiful, lingering toward the moodiest end of the spectrum, the color blue is the true artist choice. And gray paint. Who says gray is boring? Matcha paint. There's been a terrible mistake. What should remind motorists of the mellow taste of an exquisite tea instead suggests sickly sewage? Did you mix this wrong? Teal paint. Bring with you the color of the calm ocean or of a thousand suburban bathroom walls. Let the color, also known as Alyssa Blue, inspire you to drive with a new sense of serenity. Drive in peace. Okay. Um, we still have something else. To, oh, we missed a decal. Animal stripes. Go on. Release your inner beast. Okay, so that gets caught up on that one. Um, frequency files. These are... Uh, I'm actually going to show these to you. Yeah, I'm going to show these to you when I actually grab them and listen to them. So we'll do that in just a second here. Uh, well, it looks like we... Yeah. Uh, what else? Anomaly encounters. I think... Yeah, these aren't audio. These are these are audio because they have like the cassette tape. These we just read. So uh, so I was in the deep zone taking notes. I screwed up a page and threw it aside. That was when it first happened. Something I couldn't see, but I swear was there, ate the paper I dropped. Later, I would hear it rummaging in the dumpsters. It's all those old journals we tossed as part of the move. Those drew it out. It would eat cardboard too. I heard you could get it to follow you by dropping scraps as you walked. You'd never see a thing though. It was like a ghost, but you'd sure hear it. Hmm. Okay, I don't remember that happening to me, but apparently it did it at one point. Anomaly encounters too. I'm nervous saying this because people will say it was whales or dolphins or something, but it isn't like that. This thing is like a kind of submarine, sleek, thin, this dull light blue color that blends with the water. It looks metallic, but it bends like a worm. It used to stalk us out there, bumping the hull over and over, and then one night I saw it turn west, just under the water, barely disturbing the surface and it shot away fast as a torpedo it's out there somewhere at sea um, i did encounter a, a river or two i didn't really stop and look at the water per se but i guess that's probably what why that popped up uh all right let's see here anomaly studies too while this anomaly cannot strictly be described as humanoid it has nevertheless gained the moniker hat man and a slew of distant sightings describe a first impression of a tall person in a hat and coat. Um, that reminds me of the uh, Sl Slender Man, I think. Some, yeah, that, that Slender Man business. <laughs> uh, sightings are consistent in their description of a tall, thin shape moving at or just above ground level with a broad, low hat-like top above an almost cone-like tapering lo lower structure. This can give the impression of a wide-shouldered figure. No sightings of this anomaly have occurred since June 1964. However, at this time, many zone personnel begin to report extremely consistent dreams of something similar entering their homes. That's pretty damn creepy. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember seeing that, but it probably popped up on my screen at some point. Um, briefly, a widespread blight, this tiny flying anomaly would bore into oil or gasoline tanks to seemingly drink from them. Rust-colored, about the size of a horsefly and fast-moving, these were common through the summer of 1962. Though tougher than an insect, most could be swatted or stomped on. Sightings are now extremely rare, but occasionally still logged. Yeah, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to have to pay more attention because, <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I just don't remember seeing most of this stuff. We have a lab report here, lab report six. I need your help. Read through the data. Look at the numbers. I've checked every equation, every result. The batteries were consistent. The quality of the materials were pure. And yet nothing on paper could really truly explain the disparity in the results. The fact is the materials in Chamber A were exposed for longer than those in Chamber B, despite the experiment running for the same exact amount of time. Please, I beg you, I am at my wit's end. Help me find an explanation. And hurry, we've already deployed a dozen setups like this. They're already running out in the field. I fear if we don't get ahead of this, it's going to be bad. Okay. Um, I, and I, I do recall in an earlier episode saying we would wait until we get everything before we read these. But I, I think maybe we won't do that for a couple of reasons. One, that would be an incredibly long reading sesh for one thing. So it'll be a TLDR thing. Um, and two, you know, it, it's probably better to, to read them as we encounter them. Um, or at least in these, you know, these little reading sessions so that we're not trying to do it all at once. Anyway, um, the mailman one. There is evidence for continued network degradation and or interference. Of 607 packages received this week, seven arrived late in a fashion that cannot be explained. 
Four packages were sent exactly one year earlier. However, these packages have already received, excuse me, have already been received, meaning these were duplicates of some kind. Three packages were mistakenly dated. They were stamped with a date exactly one year in the future and contained messages irrelevant to their recipients or current events. I can only conclude that these were pranks of some sort and will append these to my report about misuse of our sensitive and most vital infrastructure. I don't know. That sounds like some anomalous stuff going on there. Okay, so that gets us caught up on all of our uh, logbook stuff. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys um, some video sequences of me running into the audio recordings. And then when that's finished, then we'll, then we'll get started in earnest here. steel chamber in front of her. She does not appear to breathe until a ball of light appears out of thin air. The sight is tremendous. A lightning bolt frozen mid-strike and the reaction immediate. The gathering audience roars with excitement and spontaneous applause. On Dr. Turner, only a tightening of her lips indicates that she hears the audience at all. Dr. Turner and President Koch pose for a picture and she does not smile even then. That picture is the image splashed across newspapers and science journals for the next decade. The mother of limb technology, they called her. The angel of a new age. The newspapers at that time laid the titles on thick while peddling the impending utopia. Then she recedes into the bowels of a government research facility. She's never seen again in public. There are scant appearances here and there in blink and you miss of promotional videos and blatant propaganda fodder. And then she and the promise of limb technology disappear. The press coverage of limb technology is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at first. In the decade between 1955 to 1965, limb is called many things. The promise of the future, the herald of a new age, and never spoken of again. You don't have to dig very deep for the gaps in the story to emerge. The presidential demonstration is the only physical proof we ever see of it. Compared to the Manhattan Project, developed under airtight shroud of secrecy, why was Lim paraded around in the papers? And if it really was the technological quantum leap to answer all our wildest dreams, why did it blink out of existence? The story of Lim technology is one hell of a maze, and the key to it is a woman named Dr. Ophelia Turner. Did Ophelia Turner, by all measure a failed physicist as far as her public record goes, truly invent limb technology? Or was she held up as a Rosie the Riveter for the Cold War? An atomic Annie to excite the masses during the no-holds-barred race against the Soviet Union? Was she a myth, martyr, or monster? A figment of the imagination? True savior? Or a convenient scapegoat? I'm Chiaki Saruhashi, and in this nine-part series, I aim to find out. Welcome back. This is Frequency File, Episode 2. In the last episode, I told you about the curious case of Dr. Ophelia Turner. When it comes to this enigmatic individual, one of three versions is true. Myth, martyr, or monster. To be able to weigh her in turns as heretic, genius, scapegoat, we must first set the stage. When I started down this path to discover who she was, what she did, and ultimately what happened to her, it 
expected to be in one of the strangest disturbances of the Pacific Northwest, the Olympic Exclusion Zone. But let me rewind a bit. In Northwest Washington State, there are 3,600 square miles of vibrant wilderness called the Olympic Peninsula. Bounded by water on three sides, it was a wonderland for outdoorsy types. Still have mountains of salmonberry rivers and pristine rainforests. Up until 1955, it was the residence of 100,000 people, including Ophelia Turner. It was the birthplace, her hometown, and, it turns out, ground zero and sacrificial lamb for the promise of new technology. In true fashion, the government never comes out and says that's what led to the creation of the Olympic Exclusion Zone. But the chain of events were in plain sight. Strange accidents, leading to the government's claim of eminent domain subsequent seizure of the peninsula, the evacuation of 100,000 people, and the attempt and abject failure at containing the rumors that spread like wildfire. Because it turns out, even with the government's resources at your disposal, keeping secrets is a tricky business. You can bet there was plenty of talk as a result. Lucky me, because I had plenty of questions. Here's what we know. Over 50 years ago, in November of 1946, Dr. Ophelia Turner was 27. She had recently returned home to the Olympic Peninsula to lick her wounds after a failed stint in academia. In a fit of obsession or redemption, or quite frankly, both, she cobbled together a laboratory in her basement and produced the first limb wave on nothing but a killer hunch and plain ingenuity. Or so the story goes. It's never clearly stated anywhere what limb waves and limb technology really were. It's all vague claims and wild theories, dreams that border more on the mystical than the scientific. What we do know is that limb stood for unlimited frequency. Radio waves, once souped up and modulated just right, supposedly enabled the control of matter in a way that modern science both back then and now could only dream of. After Dr. Turner's discovery, she and a few friends, scientists and PhD dolls, toured with Lynn in their garage labs for about four years. The local police and fire departments start making regular house calls, spurred on by increasingly disgruntled neighbors calling in about incidents that seem to grow larger and more disturbing as the years go on. After one too many reports, the federal government takes notice, and thus begins their severe interest in Lynn technology. The next part happens quickly. In 1955, the United States government seizes not only the physical area where Dr. Turner and her scientists live, but the entire concept of limb technology. The area is at first evacuated under the pretense of safety, but quickly commandeered by the government. They establish a brand new department called ARDA, Advanced Resonance Development Authority, which was to be headed by Dr. Turner herself. Over the next 15 years, the government expands the zone's borders, they clear out civilians as they go and erect massive 500-meter walls to keep out an increasingly curious public. The zone started in the northernmost tip of the peninsula, then expanded outward twice, once in 1961, again in 1967, to the outer perimeter we see now. evacuation of the Olympic Peninsula's 100,000 strong population, the records get sketchy. Once the region is swept clean of civilian eyes, the flow of information trickles to an eventual stop. ARDA has always maintained that the evacuation was done in the name of national security, that there was simply nothing more patriotic than sacrificing your homes, with the communists plotting our demise across the Atlantic. Certainly not because there was any danger from the strange experiments happening inside, or situations most unnatural to witness. Arda kept a wide berth, displacing citizens far ahead of the front line, so first-hand accounts of things going awry were rare. But rumors spread fast, and everyone had some story about a distant relative whose pet changed in inexplicable ways, or a friend of a friend who followed strange lights into the woods and never returned. Once the civilians cleared out, the ARDA employees moved in. Scientists, officials, support staff, and their families made the Olympic Exclusion Zone home. 
reaching anywhere from 300 to 1,000 in total at its peak. What any of them were doing in the zone was kept hush-hush, but the population just outside the walls found the secrecy irresistible. Every shipment of raw material, out-of-season weather pattern, an inexplicable light or sound became the talk of the town for the first decade of the zone's existence. Okay, so uh, first order of business is this. We're gonna we're gonna spend our twenty eight point six stable power and get as many upgrades as we can. Um, and so I think uh, there are several things I want to get. Let's start with the things that are really critical. Um, more storage, for example. So that's gonna cost us one stable energy. Right, we'll just put this in the next available. Uh, I kind of like want to keep. Well, now we can put storage over here, I guess. Okay, so this looks like it's just the same size as this one. Okay, good. Um. We might, I might do another one of those too, but let's, let's hold off on that. Okay, I think the next thing we want to do is, um, let's bring this all the way up here. So this is just another expanded locker and another expanded locker. What is this? This is a parts locker. Store a part per locker in this grid to make tripping over discarded bumpers and stubbing your toes. Oh, okay, so this is a locker for things like, um, I, I, I made an extra side floodlight, which I almost instantly regretted. Um, but that's cool, because then you can, you know, because I, I do have that stuff just on the floor, and it gets picked up in the vacuum as a pain in the ass. Oh, we need unstable energy for that anyway, so never mind. Okay. Um, we've already made the outfitting station uh, improved antenna. Integrated thermosap heat sinks allows the Santa to be activated multiple times before overheating. Okay, so yeah, what right now with our current antenna, we can only scan one junction. Um, so I guess this means we could scan more. Uh, let's keep that in mind. I'm sure we do definitely want that at some point, but uh, I'm not sure that that's a high priority. This fax machine... What it will do is it will actually allow us to store all of our notes and things and free up space for, you know, normal storage. That's only 0.3 um, KLIM2, so let's get that, except for we need a circuit board first, and I don't even think I've researched the circuit board, so where that's this right here, right? Yeah, okay. Is it? Yeah, circuit board. And that's 0.4. Okay, let's research that. Um... Oh, <laughs> good. Where did it go? All right. And now let's make a circuit board, which is here. Yeah. We got plenty of stuff to make this. I'm going to make four of them because we need, I think we're going to need them for a few different things. Okay, let's make the fax station. And that's going to go right here. Awesome. Okay, so now what we can do is go into here. And I've been... I've been storing... Uh, all of the, you know, message types of things. And I, d I don't know if audio recordings will count for this either. We'll see. Uh, but I've been storing that stuff in there. So if we go... Holy... I thought this was a shredder. 
I've been faxing everything we were supposed to destroy. Holy <laughs> Okay. Uh, open inventory. And if we press T. Oh, good. So it does. It also stores the audio recordings, too. That's great because, again, it just, you know, it totally frees up space for us, right? Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's actually put that in there uh, for now. Cool. We're making progress, ladies and gentlemen. Slowly but surely. Okay, is there anything else in here that I want? It's such a generously... Athletic simulation station is such a generously sized target. How difficult could it be to score a few points? Okay, but what the hell does it do? It looks like it's a basket. Basketball hoop. I don't know. This this is an advanced workbench, but it requires unstable energy. So the only other thing we I think we can make... Wait, what about this? Nope, that's unstable. The only other thing we can make in, uh, in here is the antenna, which requires 1.5 kalim. So let's just wait on that. We might come back to it. Okay. This is... Uh, carbon fiberglass, but we need unstable energy, so we can't do anything about that anyway. Oh, this is what I want to make, you guys. Here's my plan for the Liberator. Um, we can use this, if if you didn't uh, already know this, we can use this to take whole car parts apart. And so what I want to do is, is I want to make this and, and use it to... Oh, that uses a thermosap crystal. Hmm. That sucks, because I'm trying to save those to make our next engine. But what I was trying to say is we can use this to take apart armored um, panels and doors when we come across them and then, you know, put them on our car without having to, you know, even before we learn the blueprint for that, which I don't think we can do now without... Yeah, see, we need unstable energy to learn those. Okay, anyway, let's go back to here. Um, I need to learn the electricians. Yeah, we can't do the... Unfortunately, we can't do the blowtorch until we get unstable energy. I really want that. Um, so we have to learn the light replacement kit in or, as a prerequisite to get to this, which really sucks because... I just, you know, for the light replacement kit, well, so far anyways, I just stick the broken one in the fat, in the matter replicator or whatever it's called and just put a new one in. But I mean, it would be useful out in the field. So, but we had, we don't have a choice. We have to learn it no matter what, because it's a prereq to the electrician's kit, which we need to fix the quirk on our car and also to break into key padded um, places. Okay. So let's go back to here. And now we can learn the electrician's kit. Excellent. Nope. Grab this. Very good. Okay, now, um, we were on this. We can't do the blowtorch. We can't do that. We can't do that. Can't do that. Can't... Oh, we need corrupted energy for that. Okay. So I think that's... There, there's this anchor radar. Here's what I don't understand about this. When I go into a zone, the map al already shows me where all the anchors are. So why do I need this? Um, this enormous energy that anchors, the enormous energy that anchors generate, gives off an unmistakable unique signature that could easily be detected with the right equipment. And this is that equipment. The only thing I can think of is if we go into one of those zones where the anchors are hidden, um, it might be handy, but... I, I want to save our, our power. You know, we can come back to that for later. Let's let's save our power. So there's nothing else we can get in this menu right now. Okay, this is the light menu. We need unstable for that. This is a prerequisite, the flare gun, to the bio flare. Ever wondered what might happen should you re-engineer a regular flare with that strange neon-infused biomaterial? This is the result. You feel happy with yourself now. Okay, so probably just a longer-lasting and or brighter flare, I guess. Bioflare gun. An upgraded version of the flare gun that shoots the bioflares. Okay. And this is an actual bio lantern. Okay. I. What's this? Oh, we could learn an insulated headlight. It, it only uses. It uses stable energy. We can't learn. Uh, 
What is that? Oh, an auto tracking spotlight. Interesting. Roof floodlights. That requires unstable, so we can't do anything with that. Um, that requires a, an entire point of K-Lim, though. So let's come back to that. Um, this is a half point. I think we're going to learn this just because, here again, it's prerequisite to this other stuff. So let's just learn it. The flare gun is useful for shooting tourists with. Uh, other than that, I haven't found it to be super useful. Okay. And that, so that unlocked this for us, but of course we can't do it right now because we need unstable energy. Okay, let's move on to here. Um, unstable. Okay, this this is stable. What is this? A puncture-proof tire. Okay, so, I mean... I have not run into a spike puddle yet. That doesn't mean it isn't going to happen, but I have not found them difficult to avoid. So I don't want to lose my off-road rating because we have a, a double A off-road rating with these off-road tires, and they're also very tough anyways. Um, so, yeah, I don't think we're going to do that, plus the fact that we don't it's not a prerequisite for anything else. So that would be a waste of points in my opinion. This is a water tire. Um also a really bad road rating and not a very good off-road rating so well we can't do anything with it anyways because it's unstable so we'll come back to that if we decide it's actually necessary okay these are racks this is a roof rack um that requires one kalim and this is the other seat rack oh my god that requires two i mean we still have a lot but okay we'll come back to those I, again i'm just i want to get the priority stuff first Okay, this is, these are both unstable, so we can't do anything with them. This is a side fuel tank. I am not having any trouble whatsoever running out of fuel. Because uh, I already have the back seat fuel tank that we found for free, which is this one. Expanded back seat tank, a gas reservoir, a fuel synthesis. Ooh, now that would be useful. Leak resistant fuel tank. That's 0.8 Kalim. All right, let's let's learn this more because it's a prereq. And let's see, we were we were here, right? No. Yes. Wait. No, we skipped that because it needs unstable. Okay. So that requires unstable. This we could learn, but we already have it. However, we're still going to have to learn it because it's a prereq for these things. But I don't know that we need to do that right now. And we can't do this right now anyways. Okay, so let's move on to batteries. We need unstable for that. This is a side battery. Which requires two Kalim. This is a hydro generator. Oh. Okay, so this gives... When it, okay, so when it rains, it turns the the rain into energy, and it gives us point um, point one three five. Whereas our lightning rod gives point five. Hmm. I uh, I don't know. This doesn't seem incredibly useful to me because it doesn't rain all the time. And it has an even lower charge rate than this does. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what is this? This is a side battery. That just gives us another battery, which is useful because the um, the thingy that I have on my front bumper, that you know, that I can throw the abductors off of me, uses a hell of a lot of power. Mini turbine. Oh, this, okay, this could be useful because this will be constant, even though it's only 0.1, but it'll be a constant trickle charge. Uh, as long as the car's moving. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's learn that. Okay, back to here. So we were on battery. Um, I'm thinking a side battery is going to be useful. 
And we're going to need to learn it anyways as a prerequisite. Let's do it. And let me know, guys, in the comments if you think that the... If you think that the hydro generator is worth getting. Uh, I'm not going to get it right now. Okay, this is... Oh, this is a new type of battery. It's a lead-acid battery. It has a capacity of 30 compared to... Well, wait, what? This can't possibly be safe. Look at it. It's too big. It's too wobbly. It won't fit under the hood. It won't fit under the seat. This is a work of a maniac. Why would I want a lead acid battery that only has a 30, a capacity of 30 when the normal battery has a capacity of 35 and the same amount of health? I don't get it. Not to mention it's 2.5 KLM. What is this? A solar panel. Ooh. Oh, we have to do the advanced workbench before we can make that. Is is this an error? Is that not accurate? I, I don't get it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know in the comments. I, I don't understand why this is better than the other. It looks like it's not as good in from what I can tell. Uh, we already figured out that we can't do the workbench until... Yeah, we can't do the advanced workbench until we get unstable energy. All right, let's look at this stuff. So this thing will automatically put our car in park when we get off the seat. I think that's pretty damn useful. We're going we're gonna to learn that. Okay. We are going to need, though, in order to use that, we are going to need to go back to here and get the other seat seat rack. We need, we're going to need this anyways. Okay, so we'll put that there. We were on this stuff. Now, jumping jacks. See, now those will go in the seat too, which means we'd have to give up our our back seat fuel tank. But I mean, we've got the large fuel tank, uh, you know, the large jerry can and the small jerry can. So we could probably give that up. What does this do? That doesn't matter. It's unstable energy. It's a resource radar, though. Okay, that definitely will be useful, but we just can't do it right now. I, I want to try this. I just want to, I'm curious. I want to see what it's going to do. I mean, it tells us it throws us up in the air, but my problem with that concept is, does it also prevent us from taking damage when we come back down? <laughs> you know? Um, so I guess we will find out. You know what? Let's just install this right here. Oh, no. Um, I have to make it first. Okay. Um, that was this. Did we make it? Yeah. Okay, and we're going to remove this fuel tank, back seat tank, and I've been putting like spare parts that I'm not using in there except for this because I was using this for storage, and we want to make the, uh, the auto parker. Okay, so... If I understand this right, we get in the car. Oh, look at that. It already it just already automatically put it in drive. It doesn't start the car for you, but and then when we get out, it puts it in park. I love it. That thing's going to stay in my car forever. I'll never remove it. <laughs> uh, okay, we're almost done here, guys. Um, hopefully you guys find this interesting. Can't do an ion shield until we get unstable energy. Um, this Oh, okay, yeah, so that protects against radiation. Gotcha. Um, we've already learned the engine, but it requires a shit ton of those red crystals. And the only place I've been able to find those is from scrapping armored panels, and you don't get that many uh, to begin with. So it's going to, you know, until I can f either accumulate a crap ton of these or find, um, you know, a better source of the red crystals, which maybe we will in the mid zone. Can't really do much with that. Okay, so we've gone through the whole list and gotten the things that I think are really important. 
Um, let's go ahead and do the upgraded antenna. And we have to take this outside. Uh, did I go out the wrong way? Yeah, I think we have to go out this way. Quite a bit bigger. It's a beautiful thing. Fan freaking tastic. Okay. What else? We still have 15.3 Kalim. Um We're just about at the point where we can't do anything else. That's only 0.3. Let's make it. This maybe this is just for fuzzies. I don't know, you know, maybe it doesn't do anything um else. How do I Oh, right mouse button. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna have to give that a little bit more oomph. What? Seriously? Okay, let's let's get give, give it a better arc. <laughs> um Wow. Okay, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try one more time. Better arc, not quite as much power. Here, okay, here we go. All right, forget that. I don't have time for that. That's probably just a funzy thing. Okay, back into here. Um, and that is everything that we can make for now until we get un. Uh, wait, we can make this. What is this? An investigator module. This upgrade for the Tinker Station will report back to you which elements of a diagnosis are correct. A new chip also adds the ability to spend anchor energy to scan the car for... Ooh. Yes. Um, because we have five quirks, and I only know what two of them are. Okay. Does it look different? I don't know. Okay, we'll come back to that because we got to work on those quirks. But I want to finish up this part first. Okay, what is this? Unstable energy, can't do anything with it. Unstable. Uh, that, we can't do the prereq for that. That's unstable. So I think we've done everything we can in that area. Okay. Uh, I think we already checked all of these and the rest of these are all unstable, right? Or in that case, corrupt. Uh, lights. There was, there was this light we could do. No, we can't because it requires an advanced workbench. Never mind. So we're all caught up there. Um, we can't do armored doors and panels yet. Uh, we can do some of this stuff though. This, this menu is a pain in the ass to scroll in. Olympium bumper. Armored bumper. Insulated bumper. Lead panel. Is, okay. Um, if we look at the armored panel, it has a health of 55. Impact and explosion resistance. The lead... What? The lead-plated panel has more health than the armored? But it doesn't have the resistances, though, so... Okay. Hmm. Insulated panel has a health of 60 and electrical resists. I've run into a whole lot of electrical anomalies out there, so that could be... 
That might not be a bad idea to go for that. Um, what is, what is this stuff? Yeah, that's all the armored stuff. Well, that's the armored stuff. We have an insulated door and a lead-plated door. I suppose what you could do is have sets of these, and then, you know, if you know what you're going to be getting into in a zone, then you would change it out. Um, I just don't have necessarily the storage for that right now. The other thing, though, is, um, okay, so if I just go to Steel Door. See, the Steel Door has only 40 health. This has 60 health. It doesn't have the impact resist, but it has 20 more points of health, which might, you know, balance that out. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to decide, you know? It really is. Okay, let, let's come back to that. I, I just want to make sure there's nothing else that we can get first. We can get the puncture tires, but I, I don't I don't find that to be all that useful, to be honest with you. Um, let's go ahead and do the roof rack. We're going to want all of these racks eventually, so if we can get them, we might as well, right? Cool. All right, got the roof rack. Um, back to here. And this is, I guess, a second roof rack. All right. Um, I keep getting turned around here. Excellent. Okay, so we have all of our roof racks in place. We can't do that stuff because it's unstable energy. Um, we we did the. We can't do that because of the advanced workbench. This is the lead battery that doesn't make sense to me why it's better because it has less capacity and no more health. So I'm gonna hold off on that unless you know until you guys tell me in the comments why I should get this. I, I know we need to get it as prereqs, but do we need to do it right now is kind of the question. And then um, we can't do that because it, it, those require unstable and engines. Okay, so really there isn't really much else to spend our points on right at the moment that we are able to. So I could sit on them or we could... Uh, we could maybe upgrade to a, oh, wait a minute. We have to scan something called a belching barnacle anomaly for that. Okay, so we can't do this even if we wanted to. I'm, just from what I've seen so far, I think electrical protection would be good. So I'm going to learn the insulated door, plus the fact that here again it's got... It's got more health or hit points than the steel door, though it doesn't have the impact resist that the steel door does. Um, and then, where were we at right here? I want to get the electric uh, or the insulated uh, bumper. Lead plated. Yeah, insulated bumper. Okay, got that learned. And I want to get the insulated door uh, or panel. Yeah, we already learned the door, so we need the panel. And I think that's all we're going to do for now. We can't do the armored until we get the thing. Um, and, you know, honestly... Yeah, that impact and explosion resistance is actually going to be useful, even though it's five points less than the, uh, you know, of health than this. So I, I still might use the, um, um, what the hell is it called? This thing, the Liberator, to get armored doors and panels when I come across them. But I come across them 
you know, fairly often to where eventually I can probably salvage all of those whole without even having to, you know, to learn them at all, except for the fact that we still need to learn this as a prerequisite to these two panels, which we can do later on. Um, so we got the bumper. What is all this stuff up here? That's anti-corrosive Olympium and a powered bumper. What does that do? Finely balanced and expertly calibrated, the powered magnetically assisted pistons behind this bumper will probably reduce the effect of any collision up to a point, of course. Nice. Okay. Wasn't there a bumper that also is magnetic and it gathers parts on the ground? Lead plated, armored, insulated, powered, Olympium, anti corrosive. Or maybe that's over here. Nitro boost? Oh, cool. Mobile workbench, Lazarus device. Magnetic bumper. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a really advanced thing that obviously we, we don't we can't do yet. Alright guys, I think uh, we're going to sit on the rest of our 8.2 KLIM points there. Uh, we've pretty much upgraded and researched everything that we... Oh, actually, hold on. No, I want more storage. That's what I actually want. Um, so, yeah, let's just... Wait a second. Did we... What was this? The fuel, oh, we can't do that because of the unstable, right? Okay, never mind. Oh, we did learn the side fuel tank, so that will help compensate for me removing the back seat tank. Okay, so let's go to. That's so frustrating, that such a pain in the ass. Okay, let's learn another locker. And we, I, I guess we have to put the rest of those in here. Okay. Okay, let's learn this locker. Uh, over here. Oh, do we have to put this outside? Oh, man. Well, I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal. How did that get outside? I don't know. I mean, it's not like weird things happen in this game for no apparent reason. Um, okay, so... What is this? It's unattainable for us because it is... Yeah, so the... I guess these are just going to make the locker larger. Upgrade one of your lockers to make use of an extraordinary amount of under underground storage space. Oh, cool. But again, unstable. All right, now I think we've done everything that we can possibly do until we come across unstable energy. So, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't found this to be all that useful. Um, you know, if I need light, I can just use a flare or the relightable flare. I'm just trying to think. Okay, so let's, you know, let's say we park in an area that has a bunch of Arta trailers. But, you know, even with this turned on on the car, that's still not going to like the inside of those trailers. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take this off. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you know, if you found these side floodlights to be really useful in certain uh, circumstances. Oh, we were going to do the parts storage, weren't we? Can we do the spark storage? That was um where was that? Is that what this is? Deco vend. Where was Oh, it was this right here. Parts storage. Oh, we can't though because of unstable. We need unstable. Okay, never mind. So for the time being, we're just going to 
We're going to have to just store these extra parts in here until we can get them inside of a parts storage. One of you guys told me in the comments that we can eventually get to a pneumatic storage, and you seemed to indicate in that comment that the pneumatic storage is unlimited. Uh, where is that, though? Oh, yeah, pneumatic locker. Uh, they're all pneumatic lockers. Gotcha. Okay. This doesn't seem to say unlimited, but it does say extraordinary. So we'll definitely be looking forward to that. I want to make the side fuel tank. And let's fill it up. Having the fuel tank right next to the device that receives arced electricity. Yeah, that's safe. That is not safe. I know it, it probably does absolutely doesn't matter in reality. Well, okay, reality is a relative term <laughs> to this game. But if I was doing this for realsies, I would not put the fuel tank right next to the thing that's getting zapped by electricity. There. Now we can sleep better at night knowing we set it up correctly. Okay, so we got those things in place. We set up our little bouncy bounce thing. We set up our automatic go into park thingy right here. Whoops. So that's done. Um, we made all of our lockers. We made our fax machine. We made our basketball hoop. I think we've really moved up in the world, guys. I, I think we really have. Oh, decals. Well, you know what? Before we mess with decals, let's make the insulated panels, door, and and doors. Um, and and bumper. Okay, so let's go into here. Insulated bumper. This is a spare part, so we're just gonna chuck it in here for now. We have, we have fuel there too. Interesting. Okay. Let's grab this and stick it on here. Okay. I guess that's insulated. Um, let's make the panels and doors. And actually, you know what I'm going to do is. I'm going to remove these first and just store them in here. If we ever have to use the vacuum, it's going to suck all that stuff in there and be a major pain in the ass, but what can you do? I suppose we could store them in this outside locker for now until I start running out of space. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get them all in there is the thing, though. But it's just going to... You know, if and when I do need to use a vacuum, it'll be a few less things I'll have to screw with. All right, so I only I'm only willing to take up one locker's worth of space for the panel, so I still had to put the rest of that stuff there. And this is our only locker now that's open uh, for new stuff. Everything else is completely jam packed between the two side storage and what was in here. I completely filled this up, like, almost to the hilt. There's probably a couple things that might be able to still stack in here, uh, but it's pretty damn full. Um, okay, so I took all the rest of the panels off of the car. We already installed the insulated bumper, so we got that done. Let's go ahead and... I hope I ha have enough material to do this. We should. I mean, I got so much shit, right? Uh, we're going to need a total of five doors. Okay, so let's put one in our... And it's there, and the first one we'll put back here. Oh, that's neat. I like the way that looks. See, that's why I wanted to wait for decals and stuff until we put these on, because, you know, excuse me, they change a little bit. So, okay, so let's do, we need four more of these. I'm glad I spent all that time grabbing all that extra plasma, because that's one of the ingredients that the doors need here.
Yeah, that really makes the car look cool. Okay, so that takes care of all of our doors. Um, now, let's make the panels. And we need five of those. Insulated panel. Okay, I think that's a total of four, but let's just put these on first. Okay, and uh, we just need one more. All right, look at that. Very cool. Quite a nice upgrade for the vehicle. And remember, not not only is this going to protect us better against electricity, but it also, you know, the panels and doors themselves have more health than the steel ones. Uh, we did lose a little impact resistance though, but otherwise, I think overall, it's a, it is definitely an upgrade. Man, sure makes the car look weird. Okay, so we have two more things I want to do in this episode um, before we wrap things up here. We, we're not going to get out on the road in this episode. This is just not going to happen. This is taking a really long time, but that's okay. You know, a, a big, huge, fun part of this game for me is just working in the shop, you know, and doing all the stuff in the shop. So I hope you guys um, uh, feel the same. Okay, so we need to take care of the quirks, and we need to put some decals and stuff on. Let's do the decals first, and, and maybe, maybe even try some paint. Um... Actually, yeah, let's look at the paint first. So, we have, is there, yeah, by the way, it doesn't tell you this, but the Y key on the keyboard will will actually sort your inventory. I don't know why they don't have that down there. It's probably maybe an oversight. I, I don't know what key it would be on a controller, but uh, yeah, it's definitely Y on a keyboard. I do still have my Xbox controller, but I, I feel like I still have more control, you know, using the mouse and keyboard. It's probably just because I'm more used to it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look. So we've got red. We got three red paints. Um, we have black and blue. Isn't this already black, though? Hmm. Let's grab the black. If I paint this black, does it change it? No, it doesn't. See, okay, so that's already black, right? I think so. Um, so, unfortunately, I only have one actual blue paint. I can't even tell... Oh, you have to hold it down. Oh. I see. All right, well, maybe this black is different. Whoops. Here, we'll get into there in a second. Maybe this black is different. Um, Let's grab that. Let's also grab a red as well. Okay. Let's see if this changes the hood. Oh, it made the... Okay, so it painted the chassis black. Oh, I like that. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, a, you know, maybe a, a two-tone type of scenario. And maybe what we should do is go with red. Because uh, I don't know if I have enough blue. Or we could see if we have enough blue. Okay, let's, let's point at the... The hood. Okay, and if we make, yeah, we might actually have enough blue to do this. We'll make all the panels and doors blue and the chassis black. We already did the hatch, so it's. This is fun, man. <laughs> really enjoy this game. Gotta say. Uh, did we miss? No, I think that's... Did we get that? Is it just the light? 
I don't know. No, we hadn't. Okay. Wait a minute, though. How did the... Oh, you know what? I accidentally painted the chassis uh, blue again. That That's why I missed that other panel. Okay, let's go back to black. Um, make sure we're looking at the chassis. There. So that's... That's our black and blue car. Can we... Yeah, let's paint the bumper black. Uh, bumper. Oh, wait. It doesn't let me paint the bumper? Oh, man! Why not? I can't paint the bumper. You're killing me. Okay. Um... Can we paint the limb pulse? Nope. Alright, so there's no painting the, the components, just the panels themselves. Okay, so that's what black and blue looks like. I'm curious, um... What would it look like if it was red instead? Because the blue's a little lighter than I'd like it to be. I wish it was a little bit darker. See, that would be black and red. Hmm. I think, I think I'm going to stick with blue for now. But maybe what we could do is we could have a, we could have a set of blue panels and a set of red panels, you know, um, cause eventually I'm, I'm probably going to want to swap these out and have the other ones, you know, healing up in here. Oh shit. We've got all of these too, don't we? Okay. I'm going to let these repair. And then when I come back from the next trip, I think we'll probably just grind them up for parts because I don't, I I don't see us ever going back to steel panels for the rest of this playthrough. But I wouldn't. It'd probably be a good idea to keep one set of them around, maybe, maybe not even that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, so that takes care of painting. Let's put the paint back in here. Press Y to sort. Do we want stripes? Um, white stripes, white stripes, white stripes, black stripes. I don't think black stripes will will show up as well it could complement the blue and black theme though let's grab let's grab a black stripe decal kit and I want to see what it looks like on the hood in particular I like that I like that can we also do it here There we go. Yeah, sign me up, baby. We can't do... Yeah, black straps on a black chassis doesn't make sense. White stripes, however... That could be... Inter what is this? Animal stripes. What's this? Not today. I'm just, just for science, okay? What does this look like? What if we put this on the chassis? Hmm. I mean, putting something on the roof doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because... Whoops. Because we'll never see it, right? Um, I don't want to put it on the hood because we already have the stripes on the hood. Let's see what this looks like. Tiger stripes! Oh, that's cool, man! Yeah, I love it. We're going to keep the tiger stripes. It'd be nice if they showed up a little more, but it probably is just because we have... A black chassis. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we're going to keep those. Okay, let's put all this stuff back in here. Press Y to sort. And now let's look at some of this stuff. Um, wait. 
Okay, go here. This is like... They need to fix the contrast on this. Um... A brick wall. Okay, what is this? I think this is a... Money wizard. Play the game, Gary. What does this install on? Um... Is that a hood ornament? I don't know. Well, here, let's just install it and see. Interior. What did that do? <laughs> I don't know what that did. Uh, oh! It put it. Oh, okay. It's a. It's an a, a a dash ornament. It's right there in front of me. Okay. I think that's all we have because I think if we had more stuff, it would show up down here. Okay. So this is the thing here that hangs off the mirror, and it looks like we only have a wizard, and I'm good with that. Let's install a wizard. Oh, it said it's already installed. It is? Wait, what? I don't see a wizard it's hanging off my mirror. Hold on. What the hell's going on here? That doesn't make sense. And it sh it says it's installed here, but it shows that it's empty here, and obviously I can't see it. Oh, okay. It's up here it says bobblehead. Okay, that's where I can tell what... I mean, this one was more obvious, but this one I wasn't sure about at first. So we only have the one bobblehead. Okay. Um, this is seems to indicate that we have this, but why doesn't it show up and... I want my wizard on my mirror, damn it. <laughs> um, see, the other thing that's weird, too, is I can clear this slot, but I can't. There's no option to clear. Something's, yeah, I think something's just bugged. If we go in here and we open this up, do we have the wizard? Money wizard. Um... We can't take it back out. Yep. And we can't uninstall it. So, I don't know. I, it's got to be broken. Okay, let's move on to steering wheel. We can install the drunker steering wheel. It says that's installed too. Something is definitely not working right. Because it, it, neither one of those things are in, obviously installed. Is the rest of it bugged too? Let's look here. Yeah, something's not right, guys. Um, let me let me save the game and log out and come back in. Oh my god, that scared the hell out of me. Um, I couldn't restart the game. Um, I couldn't restart this save. I tried an earlier save and it kept crashing. But I, what I did was I completely closed out of the game, like all the way out, and then I was able to get back in. Okay, so... So we still have our brick bobblehead thingamadoodle. Um... And it still says that our wizard's installed when it's not. That's... That sucks. What, okay, can we install this? Alright, now can we go back to... That other thing that it said was installed that never actually was installed? Future stylings. 
Swap item. Okay. Okay, so that shows up. Um, I guess for some inexplicable reason... The game thinks these other things are installed when they're not. If we... Um, here. Let's, let's install BLM. It, it's installed, right? Okay. Where does that show up at? Oh, no, here it is. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we got the BLM sticker on there. And, um... That's... Can we have... Okay, hold on a sec. Clear slot. So it looks like we can only have one sticker on at a time anyway. I don't know. Oh, right sticker, left sticker. I see. Okay. So this is the left sticker. Okay, let's go back to BLM. And this is the right sticker, which says it's already installed, but it isn't. So if we go to... Um, Oh, let's see. Straight ally sticker. So did that install... Okay, so that installed on the right. Gotcha. Okay. We can leave that on there. That works for me. You know what, though? I would like to see what the pet one actually looks like. Um... Now it shows up. It wasn't showing up before. I got you. Okay. Um, but no, we'll we'll go back to the other one. I almost never ever do this. Um, I very intentionally stay, uh, st stay away from politics, religion, and all that kind of stuff on this channel because it's just too divisive. But. I am absolutely proud to have a Black Lives Matter and a whatever the hell that's called sticker. <laughs> uh, in other words, oh, straight ally sticker there. I'm absolutely proud to have both of those on my car. So there you go. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about it because, yeah, we just don't do politics and all that stuff on this channel. Uh, we're all about gaming, but I'll make the exception this one time. Okay, so anyway, let's... Um, I guess the last thing we have to do... Oh, well, obviously, some of these other things are bugged, right? So the only solution is for me to find another stick shifter and find another antenna thingamadoodle and steering wheel and then swap them out to, to fix it. Because, see, it says that it's empty over here, but it apparently thinks... Yeah, the game apparently thinks that they are installed... I wonder if I had something to do with me changing out the panels. <laughs> that could be. Okay. Last thing we need to do is try and figure out our glitches. Or quirks, rather. So let's go into here. Now, we upgraded this to where it kind of tells us... It's supposed to tell us... Wait a second. Yeah, we have the investigator module. What is that supposed to do again? Let's look. Over here. Uh, where did we... Where did we find that? That was this. Okay. This upgrade for the Tinker Station will report back to you which elements of a diagnosis are correct. A new chip also has the ability to spend anchor energy to scan the car for abnormal, uh, abnormalities. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we have some anchor energy... So why don't we try... Let's fix the two that we know about, and then maybe we can use that scanner thing to figure out the other ones. All right, so if we go to here, 
and down to four. We need an electrician's kit and a mechanic's kit. Okay, so we have the... Oh, I thought I had a mechanic's kit in here, but apparently I don't. Unless I took it out and put it somewhere. Oh yeah, you know what? The advantage of making all those panels is it freed up a bunch of room for us, um, you know, for storage, which is a beautiful thing. That one's completely free. What are you doing over here? This thing moves around all the time. Every time I log in, it's in a different place. No surprise there. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, so we're going to have to make mechanics kit and an electrician's kit. All right, now we should be able to fix this problem. Okay, now the other problem was when the hood closes, the light goes on. Yeah, see that? Okay, so let's turn that off. Man, I can't wait to take my new upgraded car out. It's going to be fun. Okay, let's go back to here. So. Um, hood is closed. Dome light switches on. So make diagnosis. Um... How is the investigator module telling me that those are the right components? Oh, 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 oh. With the happy faces down below. Oh, okay. So. Oh, so it must toggle. Aha! There we go. I thought it just turned on all the time, but I guess it toggles. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, we need a light replacement kit. We can do that because we learned it. That's going to be here. Oh, we still have four more. Is it possible that those are the quirks? The the reason why those those things aren't showing up? Cause we have four things that aren't working and we still have four quirks. Um every car, door, headlights, horn, dome. Yeah, see no, it doesn't give us the option to choose decals or decorations though. All right, so the only th other thing I can say is that I have noticed this vehicle um, when it when I'm out out and about, I've noticed it kind of you know kind of lower on and then pop back up again like on the shocks so headlights horn wipers any tire I don't know what we would say okay let's try car receives anchor that has happened I have had an anchor just pop out of the out of nowhere. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what I would. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would select for the third thing. Every car door, fuel shifter, 
Headlights, hood, horn. I haven't noticed anything else happen when that happens. Maybe the radio switch is on. I don't know. Let's just see what happens if we try this. See if it marks any one of those correct. None of them. Okay. Yeah. Um. So how do I... Okay, it looks like we press V to investigate. How much limb energy does that use? Oh, it uses a half. Okay. Four hints found. Oh, here we go. Okay, headlights. Steering wheel wipers. I'm trying to remember if I've noticed anything weird about that stuff. Let's... I did have one time when the wipers did seem to act strangely. So wipers... Wait, how many guesses do we have? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's, yeah, let's spend some more limb energy. Oh, shit, that used two and a half limb energy. <laughs> shit. Okay, I didn't notice that. I guess it gets more expensive. Okay, so the wiper switches off when... Um, I have no idea, you guys. I really don't. Um, let's let's do the limb energy one more time, and that pretty much uses it up. When headlights, trunk, or wipers, wait, what? Wiper switches off. When wipers. Get stuck, toggle, switch on. Well, here, actually, hold on a sec. I don't know why I didn't think to do this earlier. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, so when you turn the wipers on, they turn on and they are fine. When you turn the wipers off... Oh! Did you just notice that? The hatch just opened. Aha! Okay. Okay, so, um... Wipers. Switch off, right. Okay, switch off. Um, trunk opens. There we go. This is really fun, man. I, I gotta say, it's just, it's so bizarre, but it's, it's you know, it's like a mini game within the game. Okay, we need a mechanics hit, uh, kit to fix that. We can do that. All right, let's go to mechanics kit. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now, um, so we, this tells us there's something wrong with our headlights and our steering wheel. Uh, I'm glad it didn't reset that either. Oh, okay. So wipers and headlights are still involved in something as well. steering wheel. Let's see if we can figure out if there's something weird about our headlights.
Okay, they switched on. I didn't notice anything. Let's switch them back off. Headlights. Stay on when wipers. When headlights. Okay, so the headlights can brighten, dim, or flicker. Okay, let's 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 go, let's go to a steering wheel. Steering wheel. Let's let's see if the steering wheel has an impact on the headlights. That's that's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so turn the lights on. If we turn left, nothing happens. If we turn right, nothing happens. That's right, I don't have to shift anymore. If we reverse... Whoopsie. Okay. Is... Are the lights actually doing something when I'm turning? It looks like for a moment they're like they flashed. It's hard to... See. I, I... I think they're flashing. Aren't they? Okay, here. We'll go forward. And we're gonna turn left. Or maybe they dim when I turn right. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Let's do that again. Okay. When I turn right... Well, I didn't notice at that time. Some of this stuff is really subtle. Hmm. I can't tell now. It seemed like it was more obvious at first, but... Is it? Changing when I accelerate or decelerate. See, the, the thing that makes this difficult is it could also just be the way the light's reflecting off of the environment. It, it's not super obvious. Let me put it that way. Okay, the wipers were still on the list too, weren't they for something? What happens if we turn our wipers on? Doesn't seem to do anything. I mean, I do detect what appears to be like a little bit of a dim, a quick dim, but again, it's just really difficult to tell because it could just be, you know, the environment. And, you know, most of the other quirks that, you know, we've come across so far are pretty obvious. Except for that I have I have four quirks that aren't obvious because I haven't figured them out yet. Okay. 
headlights and steering wheel. Steering wheel. Goes left, goes right, swerves hard, stays turning. Swerves hard, headlights. Let's say dims. I have six guesses. Okay, so we got three correct. Okay. Let's okay, let's go back out and test this again. It'd be actually it would be really good if it was uh nighttime, you know, but I can't change that of course. Okay, so we know we have to swerve hard. And something will happen with the headlights when we do that. Oh, that's right, we gotta thingy. I, sh I chose dim, but that wasn't right, so maybe maybe they get brighter. Okay, they just brightened for a second there. Did you guys see that? As if you can answer me. Okay, let's swerve hard. Yeah, I think I think they I think it's brightened. I think that's what it is. That that is subtle though. I mean, I would probably never notice that. <laughs> Cuz you would think it was just, you know, the reflection off the environment. Okay, so um headlights. No, not headlights, steering wheel. Swerve hard. Headlights brighten. Huzzah! <laughs> All right, look at this. Um, so we need to we need an electrician's kit and a light replacement kit. We can do that. Hot damn. Okay, we have two more problems with the car. Um, again, involving the headlights and the steering wheel. How interesting. Okay, um... Wipers, steering wheel goes left, wipers, okay, let's turn left with the wipers on and see if something happens. Ah, look at that, look at that. They slow down or something, right? Okay. Um, steering wheel goes left. Wipers. Gets... Either move slow or get stuck. I would say they get stuck. That's kind of appeared, is what it appeared to be the case. Nope. Okay. Then move slow. Because it's not toggle, switch on or off, or move fast. Really? Wobble? Doesn't seem like a wobble to me. I guess those are wobbling wipers, guys. <laughs> okay, we need a mechanic's kit to fix it. I wouldn't have called that wobbling, but whatever. Um, huzzah. Okay, yeah, see, things with wipers... 
and I did notice something seemed odd about my wipers when I was out and about, but I think there was a bunch of other shit happening at the same time, so it wasn't something I could give my full attention to. Okay, so there's still a problem with their headlights. Headlights. Okay. Something would cause the headlights to either switch on off, toggle, stay on, or stay off. They, the only way they would stay on is if I tried to turn them on or off and they stayed on because um, the shifter, no, not the shifter toggles, I don't think. Let's just see if we can figure out something weird about the headlights when shifting takes place. Whoops. Okay, let's turn the headlights off. Doesn't seem to ha have anything to do with shifting. Hmm. Okay. Headlights. Whatever it is, it's switching them on, off, toggling them on, off, or preventing them from either being turned on or turned off. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's weird. Uh, um... If the car... Okay, we've already messed with the shifter. This would still seem to indicate the wipers are still involved. So something about the headlights and the wipers. So it stays on wipers no matter which of these five I choose. Um, something about the headlights and the wipers. Okay, so... Just want to see if. Oh, did you see that? What did I do to make that happen? The wipers stopped working for a second there. Are they... Did they? Or am I just imagining things? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, look at that. When I turn hard to the right... Or when I reverse... Hmm, it's not... It doesn't seem like it's doing it consistently, though. Okay, they got they just got stuck there by swerving maybe? Okay, so a swerve a swerve to the right causes them to get stuck. Uh well, except for it didn't that time. A swerve to the
It's not... It's not consistent, is the thing. And my headlights are not involved at all. Okay, it got stuck there. That is really bizarre, man. Okay, see, they're stuck. Is it when I reverse? Okay, they're stuck again. So maybe it's just a random... Let's just drive normal. And see if they just randomly... Stop for a minute. Yeah. See, I'm not really doing anything... Crazy. I'm just driving. And they, they stop for a bit. Okay, so what does that have to do with the headlights? Let's turn the headlights on. So... It appears that if the headlights are on, the wipers don't get stuck. Right? Okay, so we were we we were bloop, we went around the entire track without the wipers getting stuck. Now, let's turn the lights off. And they already just got stuck. I think we figured this one out. Yep. That's what it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> we figured it out. Uh, well, I think so anyway, so we'll, we'll find out here in a second. Again, some of this stuff is like... Man. It's not... Some of them are very obvious. Like, you know, backing up and the, and the hood popping up, but some of these are not very obvious. Okay. Oh. Yeah, see, we don't even need to be driving. And they just get stuck. Okay. Headlights. Well, they don't switch on. Okay, hold on. It wants me to start with headlights. Okay, headlights, switches on. Wipers. Get stuck. We have three guesses here. Uh, okay, I would have to say stays on then. Wipers get stuck. No, no, no. Damn it. Stays off. My bad. My bad. Wipers stay off. Okay. Yes, we got it. Okay. Whew. That was our last guess, too. <laughs> uh, what do we need? We need an electrician's kit. Okay. Oh, my goodness, man. We, we took that all the way down to the wire. Uh, but we figured it out. That's the important thing. Um, okay, let's make an electrician's kit. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have fixed every single quirk on the car. This is no longer yellow. And our car is in the absolute best condition it can possibly be in. Except for, I think I banged the bumper a little bit, so I'll have to fix that. Um, all right, cool, man. I'm just, like I said, I'm just 
absolutely enjoying this game. So yeah, this whole episode was pretty much in the shop, but it was fun stuff in the shop. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, so the plan for the next episode, of course, is for us to go back out and about. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot more... There are more zones we could go to um, here in the outer zone, but... And actually, if you look at this, see this zone here? It actually has unstable energy, even though it's in the outer zone. It, I wonder if it's because it's got the storm or something going on. So does this one. So what we could do is we could... That one doesn't have unstable. We could go to these two and see if we can grab ourselves some unstable energy. But it's going to be one hell of a scenario, too, with all the crap that's going on in there. Um, either that or we just... I, I'm kind of inclined to to start getting back, you know, with, with the story and getting into the mid-zone. So I think that's probably what we'll do, um, you know, in the next episode. We have to get, though, we have to get to... We still don't have an open path to get there. So maybe we could still grab some unstable energy on the way there. So we'll see how things go. Anyway, um, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was even longer than usual, but uh, just a lot of fun things happened. I'm really enjoying the game. Hope you guys are enjoying watching it. So with that being said, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, if you like the video, I'm, I'm my outro. <laughs> I just screwed up my outro. So yeah, you know, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.